The American canning industry has been a part of our nation around the world for many, many years. A good 20, maybe 30, maybe 40 years. I'm not an expert in this. But what I know is that long ago, women would learn to can or jar things, basically, in a way that kept things for the long-term opportunity to use them in a particular situation. And that gift of knowledge may no longer be with us or with many people. Many people who live in the country or many people who are elderly do know how to do those things. But the recipes may not be anything that are out there. Who knows? I don't think that's really my point. I think my point is that in a time of COVID, when we have the opportunity to eat, it's no problem to pick a canned food and keep it in our pantry. For those days coming up where we have some, some winter storms and we can't get out of the cul-de-sac, we need to have canned proteins and canned fruits and canned beverages available to us in prepping stages in our pantries, in our garages, or better yet, in the house, in the basement, where things are can be kept cool and not too damp. Because outside in the garage, moisture condensates and cans be, can, can become ruined by that. Liars in America want to tout that we should all be out there shopping and eating and doing, of which we can but we really need to be buying foods in a can. And we can always add our own flavors, our own spices, our own jars of various types of, of uh, dressings and whatnot. But the truth is that as we head into winter, and we haven't gotten there yet, but the, the, te the temperatures are changing. And the dew point is freezing at some points right now. Are you starting to prepare for your winter in this community in which you live in anywhere around the world? Are you prepared for the overheat of summer if you're in a place that doesn't get any snow? Are you prepared for the upcoming blizzards that might be coming one or two in a row? Are you prepared with extra food at hand in case you get sick and you can't get out or you're too sick to drive somewhere? I'm encouraging you to look through your canned goods and make depletions of things you're never going to use. Donating to them to a food pantry is not always great, but donating them to a food pantry type of industry, meaning a type of a large organization that feeds lots of people for your pumpkin pie sauce and all that sort of stuff, might be better for that. You see, they will make large volumes of pumpkin pie, whereas a person who's homeless or indigent isn't likely to do that. People who are homeless need real canned foods that can be eaten cold out of a can. That is not every type of canned good out there. Most homeless people do not eat too many vegetables out of a canned coal. At least I've never seen them doing that. They will eat, however, cold ham, cold pork, cold beef, cold chicken, sometimes canned tuna or salmon, but it all depends on their allergies and their stool constitutions and whether they can handle that. Additionally, they will eat low syrup, canned fruit. Everybody wants to do fruit cocktail, but not everybody likes that. And the syrups and those things can be hard for people. Not everyone has a strainer to wash those items through. And as a child, my mother used to have a strength vegetable broth that would come out of her fresh frozen food. But again, if you're homeless, if you're indigent, you may not have the ability to pay for electricity by winter because a lot of people are still losing jobs for stupidity of behavior. And it can take three to six months to get a new job. Foolish people network with the companies right next door. Smart people network with companies that are more around the corner. And openly, the reason for that is so that you're not tainting the entire environment in which consumers and visitors and guests are coming. The liars of America play ping games on the homeless in which they alert each other when someone is nearby. Or they've actually taken a dog tag from an immoral child who works in a pet store and placed it either in that human being without consent which is highly illegal and incredibly immoral, or they place it in some item, some coat, some bag of that person so that they get the information at all times of where they are. There are also these stickers that can be applied to things that a person doesn't see that will give a reading on that individual. It's new technology. So what we're talking about today is human trafficking in all different ways. There's human trafficking for sex, there's human trafficking for information, there's human trafficking for abuse, there's human trafficking for, I don't know, idolation. Here's the problem. If you're posting a photograph of a famous person 
on your social media accounts, you're lying to yourself. You're committing identity theft, you're committing a form of fraud, and you're committing definitely cybercrime. You don't have any rights to those images online. Every photographer owns the copyright of his photograph, including those on your phone. The minute you upload them, there is some risk. But if it's a photograph you've taken, then it's yours. If it's not a photograph you've taken, it's never yours.